Hey everyone, it's Miss Bree. Um, welcome to Intro to Cooking. Today, I'm going to show you guys some cutting skills. For those of you who have already done this or who know how to cook, this will be more of a refresher. For those of you who have not, this will be brand new for you. Um, cut, or, uh, cutting is one of the most important pieces of cooking. You'll need to know how to um, add quite a few different things to your recipe. So I'm excited to show you guys. Let's get started. Okay, so these are a couple of different knives. I want to show you which one we'll be cutting with. So this is a steak knife right here. This is a butter knife. This is a carving knife and this is a chef's knife. This type of knife right here is going to be the best type of knife to use to um, cut. Okay, so let's first learn how to hold the knife. So we don't want to hold it like this, this would be too flimsy. We don't want to put it too far up on the knife like this. So we want to have it right in the right spot, so we're going to put our two fingers right here at the end of the silver part, like this, and then you just kind of wrap your hands around. So this is how it will look. So it might feel weird at first, but you'll get used to it. Some people put their finger up here just to give them a little bit more grip. Um, it's still safest to hold it this way. Um, and of course, it would be safer if we had a cutting glove, but we don't, so um, that's okay. So um, another tip is a lot of people think that you hold your hand down like this when you cut if you do it like a bear claw instead like you're about to claw something then it actually gives you more grip and it protects your hands from getting cut off so you um when you're cutting you're kind of cutting at the edge of your fingertips and it's just kind of leaning atop leaning on top so um another common mistake that people make is they tend to chop aggressively like this and that is not going to give you an efficient cut and it's probably going to take longer to get through the cutting. You want to use more of a rocking motion like this and this as your grip. All right, so the first thing we're going to start with is an onion. Um, this is a really common vegetable that you'll probably cut. So a lot people can cut an onion in a lot of different ways, but I'm going to show you the way that I do it. So you're going to cut it right in half. Again, you're using this clawing motion. Okay, so claw, knife, make sure it's in the right position again. You're going to cut it in half. What this means is you're cutting it in half on the roof. Or I mean, to the root is what I meant, sorry. Okay, so now that we've cut it in half, now we're gonna peel. Some people like to peel a little bit more of a layer. Some people like to peel less of a layer. It's kind of up to you. So now we have that peeled. Wipe this off. Of course, we would normally clean off the whole thing to make sure that we don't have any um, onion pieces. I'm also going to step away to rinse off my knife really quick. Okay. So, still using the claw. We're going to cut across like this. Now again, some people do this in different ways. Not everybody cuts it this way. This is just um, the way that I like to do it to kind of get a thick dice. So then you kind of take it down. You kind of cut a couple. So me, I'm kind of used to putting my finger on top of the knife, so that's how I do it. And again, I'm using that rocking motion I'm using my claw to kind of grip the onion as I'm doing it. And once you get to the end, if you don't have any more space to use your finger, you just can kind of rest your two fingers on the top of the knife to use as a grip. And you saw me use that rocking motion. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm just gonna kind of dice it now using the rocking motion. And I like to kind of put my fingers on top when I'm doing this, get rid of that part. We're gonna go through one more time. Okay, so now this 
is kind of more of a thick dice. So this is what a thicker dice looks like. So now, if you wanna do it thinner, I'm gonna put a little bit to the side so you guys can see the difference between thick and a thin cut. My eyes are getting watery here. As you, everyone knows, that happens with onions. The faster you get through this, the um, less likely it is that you're gonna get extreme eye watery. So, when you go to chop it smaller, you just kind of bunch it up together and you do the same motion. Now, still use the rocking boat. What I like to do when I chop is kind of hold the top part like this and press down. So it's still a rocking motion, it's just a way to kind of get it there. Now I want you guys to notice how my cutting board is kind of slipping out all over the place. Um, a way that you can kind of fix that problem is you can put a wet paper towel or a wet washcloth underneath the cutting board and that's going to keep your cutting board in place. So, I'll, so as you see, I'm just, I just keep kind of grouping it back together. Keep cutting it, group it back together. Keep cutting it. And this is how you continue to get a smaller piece. It's, it's really good to stop and group it back together. Oops, see, you see this hair in here right here? That's why it's important to have your hair up while you're cutting. So anyway, you wanna always come and group it back together. Start from one side and chop this way. And then once you get to the top, you group it back together again. And this is how you can continue to get smaller pieces. Okay, so here's the difference. We have thick dice, thin dice. Usually if a recipe calls for something diced, they're gonna want it to be more thin. Um, especially when you're using vegetables for cooking, for flavor, you want them to be thinner. If you want like the more oniony taste or you want it to, be, you wanna have more of a crunch, this is when you would use thicker. So there's that. Okay, so the next type of cut I'm going to show you is um, a julienne cut. So you're going to use the julienne cut not as often as the dice, but I still wanted to show it to you. You use this thing, you use this for things like fajitas. Um, make sure always to wash your produce first. That's really important, especially right now. So I already washed mine. So how I start off by cutting a pepper is I'm, I have my knife, how it's supposed to be. I'm cutting off just the thin top. Just like that. And then I'm peeling it out, taking out the inside, and just kind of pulling out the seeds. Okay? That's how you do that. Now, then I'm going to cut it in half. Like that. And for Julian, you're kind of just doing it in strips. These can be thin strips, they can be thick strips. You see how I still kind of have some thickness down here. I'm going to cut that in half again. That way I can get to this part of the pepper more. I have my hand in a claw shape so I don't cut myself. I'm just kind of doing it in strips like this. That is a julienne cut. Now this might be too long. You can kind of cut it off like that. There we go. Okay, so the third cut I'm going to show you is cubed. Um, cubed is usually used for things like potatoes, if you're like making fried potatoes, or um, for meat, like chicken, when you're trying to cube chicken up to cook. So for cubes, again, there's no, there's no really special specific way to do this. Um, you just want to have pieces that are bigger than diced, and so that's really the goal. Um, I already peeled the potato, I already washed the potato, washed my knife, and I like to do mine when I'm dicing, or I mean when I'm um, cubing, I like to cut it in half this way, and then I put it back together and I cut it in half this way. And then I just kind of take one piece, 
and I just kind of keep cutting it in fours. Cute. Again, cut it in half again. Cut it in half again. Cute. Cut it in half again. Cut it in half again. Cubes. And when some of these pieces are too big, like this might be a little bit too big and will take longer to cook, you can just come back and correct some of the ones that you diced. And I want you to notice how this is a really good example of a rocking. So I started like down like this and I rocked up like that. I started my knife up, went down, rocked back up. Start my knife down, back up, back up, back up. And there we have diced. These are kind of bigger diced. Like I said, if you need them to be smaller, you can just kind of take it and cut it again. Just always remember when you are cutting small pieces, you still want to use that claw. You don't want your fingers to be like this. You still want them to be curved in like a bear claw. Okay, so that completes this first cutting video. Have a good day, guys.